Hello, great people. Welcome to today's math class. Look at this nice exponential challenge here. I want to solve it quickly. The question is 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of 6 equal to 6 to the power of x times 6 to the power of 5. What is the value of x? Here we are asked to find x. x is equal to work. So how do we solve for the value of x here? We are going to solve this step by step, okay? So we take our solution here. So solution. All right. Now the first thing we're going to do here is to divide both sides of the equation by six to the power of x and five to the power of six. So from here we say divide, divide through, through by our um, six to the power of x and Five to the power of six. So this is what we're going to do here. So we have your five to the power of x times five to the power of six, all of our six to the power of x times five to the power of six. Then we do the same thing to this side of the equation, which is our six to the power of x times six to the power of five, all of our our six to the power of x times five to the power of six. Easy. So what happened, you discover that this, we go with this. And on this other side, you discover this, we go with this. Easy. So we now have our equation to be our 5 to the power of x, all over 6 to the power of x, equal to our 6 to the power of 5, all over our 5 to the power of 6. Easy. Right? Good. So what do we do next year now? If you share this expression we have here, they are having the same power. And there is a simple law in indices which says that if you have your a, a to the power of your m, all over your b to the power of your m, so this could be written as your a all over your b, always to the power of your m. Right? Good. So if we consider that, we can rewrite this expression as our 5 all over 6 all raised to the power of x is equal to, look at this here. The smallest power here is 5. Here we have 6. And so we can rewrite the denominator to bring out 5 we have as the exponent here. So we can rewrite this as our 6 to the power of 5 all over our 5 to the power of 5 plus 1. Okay? Now, this expression we have here now, according to another law in indices, it says that if you have your a to the power of your m plus your n, this is the same thing as your a to the power of your m times your a to the power of your n. So if we consider this law again, we can rewrite this side of the equation. So this is going to give us, let's keep this side first. So we're going to have your c to the power of 5 all over our 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 1. Again, we can separate this 5 from this entity here. Okay, so let's continue and see where this gives us here. So we're going to have this. Our left hand side still remains 5 all over 6, all raised to the power of x. This is equal to. So we're going to have this to be 6 to the power of 5 all over 5 to the power of 5 times 1 all over 5. So you discover that we now have 6 to the power of 5 and 5 to the power of 5. So we can rewrite that like we did here, according to this law here. So rewriting this, so this is going to give us here our 6 all over 5, all raised to the power of 5 times, look at your 1 all over 5, to also be written as our 5 all raised to the power of minus 1. According to the law, which says that if you have your 1 all over your a to the power of your m, this is equal to your a to the power of minus m. So according to this law, we can rewrite this in this format here. Right? Good. So what do we do next year now? Look at the left-hand side of our expression. It is 5 all over 6 all raised to the power of x. And here we are having 6 all over 5 all raised to the power of 5. But we want to make the quantities inside the bracket to be the same. So how do we achieve that? 
I want to turn this up and bring this down. And when we do that, what happen? This will take a negative power. Okay? So this we remain the same. So we have here our 5, all of our 6, all raised to the power of x. This is equal to our 5, all of our 6, all raised to the power of minus 5. Okay? Times, yeah, our 5, all raised to the power of minus 1. I hope there's no confusion here so far, right? Good. So what we do again now, we look at this once again. Here, we log both sides of the equation. Okay? We log both sides of the equation. Now, taking log to what base are we going to take this? We could as well take this to base 10. But because of the presence of this and this, I want to take log to base 5 all over 6. Yes. That will be much easier to manipulate. Okay? We will later convert to base 10. But yeah, let's log this side. So this will give us log our 5 all over 6 all raised to the power of x base 5 all over 6. This is equal to our log here. Yeah, we have this quantity here now, which is bracket our 5 all over 6 all raised to minus 5 times our 5 all raised to minus 1 or in a square bracket base 5 all over 6. Easy. So yeah, we're going to apply what we call the multiplication law of logarithm. Okay? Before we talk of same base law, let's apply the multiplication law of logarithm so that we can open up what we have in here. Okay? So what does the multiplication law of logarithm say? It says that if you have your log, your m, your m, yes, times your n, said this is equal to your log, your m, then plus log your n okay let's just manage this case here so if we do that this is going to give us here our log the first one is five all over six all raised to the power of minus five this five all over six plus log our five to the power of minus one all these five all over six this is six please all right so what do we do here now? We consider what is called the power law of log reading, which says that if you have your log, let's take log p to the power of t, move this back to this side. So this is going to give us here our t times log our p. So if we do that, we can move this backward, move this backward, and we come to this other side and move this quantity backward also. Okay, so if we do that, it's going to give us our x times our log our 5 all over 6, this 5 all over 6. Okay, this is equal to our minus 5 times log our 5 all over 6, this 5 all over 6, yeah, plus. Then let's keep this plus here, okay? Plus, this is going to give us minus 1 into times log our 5, this 5, all of our 6. Easy, right? Good. So let's continue on this other side again and see what this gives us in turn. Uh, we are getting there gradually. All right. Now look at this. This and this are the same. This and this are the same. This and this are different. So we circle to what we call the same base law in logarithm. We see that if you have your log, your a, base a, this is equal to 1, provided that your a is not equal to 0. That is another good law or powerful law in logarithm. So what happened, the whole of this will turn to 1, the whole of this will turn to 1. So we're going to have our x here, yeah, studied alone, is equal to yeah, 1 times minus 5 will give us minus 5. So yeah, we have minus times plus will give us minus here. Yeah. So we have minus log our 5 is 5 all over 6. All right. Now, with our calculator, for us to forge 5 uh, log 5 basis is an issue. It's going to give us a problem. 
So what we do, we convert to a different base, which is base 10. So we have another law of logarithm. It says that if you have, let's take it from here. If you have your log, your A, base B, and you want to change this to BC, this is going to give us log your A, BC, all over log your B, BC. This is another law again, right? So let's convert this to base 10. So this is going to give us our minus 5, 10 minus our log 5, base 10, right? All over log 5, all over 6, base 10. Easy. Wow. So what do we do here now? So log 5 is the simplest way we can simplify this. We apply the division law of logarithm. Have we looked at that already? Okay. The division law of logarithm says that if you have your log, let's take it here. If you have log, your m all over n, then this is same thing as your log, your m, then minus log, your n. Okay. So with that, we can rewrite this. So this is going to give us x is equal to minus 5, then minus our log 5 base 10 all over log 5 minus log 6 all in base 10, all in base 10. Easy. Now look at this carefully. We can still simplify log 6. That is 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, right? Good. So if we simplify this, this is going to give us minus our 5, then minus log 5 base 10 all over our log 5 base 10, then minus log our 3 times 2 base 10. Again, we apply the multiplication law of logarithm. We've done that already, yeah. So if we apply the law, uh, multiplication law of logarithm, then we can rewrite this again. So we're going to have here, therefore, our x is equal to minus 5, then minus, here we have log 5, base 10, all over, yeah. But let me put this minus here so that you know that it's covering everything here, okay? All right, so this is going to give us log our 5 base 10, then minus log our 3 base 10, minus log our 2 base 10. So let's just manage this space here. So this is the value of our x. If you go ahead to include the value of log 5, log 3, log 2, and log 5 here, then simplify everything, it's going to give you an approximate value, okay? Which is roughly 8.8279 da da dash. Of which, if you impute that into this system, then it will give you an approximate answer. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this math class. For Seba, you must have learned from this video tutorial. Give the video a thumbs up, drop it in the comments. Give this video a like. Okay, or you have a better way of solving this or serving time then drop it in the comment section so that all I must TV can equally learn from you. I want to appreciate uh, most of my viewers who always suggest alternative methods to solving some of the problems we've already published on this channel. Okay, You've encouraged us and you actually cause us to learn a great deal. Thank you so much for being there. We are open to um, this easy and also to learn new things, new methods, new approaches to solving mathematics. You are our backbone. We love you dearly. Keep winning until we come your way in our next class.